and it was oh, Bertie the Destroyer is back. What are you doing, mate? You all right? Come on, go away. What are you doing? No. Man, look at all that crud you're dragging into my layout. All right, he'll go away. So, <laughs> mate, really? All right, we'll go again. Oh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ness River Railroad. David MacDonald here. All right, I don't really need to wear my glasses for this. Um, so, yeah, just popping up to say hello, really. Uh, it's been two months, I believe, since my last update, or roughly that. Um, and I haven't really done any construction or building work or track laying or anything on the layout since um, we last saw each other, so to speak. Uh, but I have been doing stuff. Um, I had a little sort of flurry of activity with my last couple of videos because I happened to be laid up at the time off work as I'd broken my knee, um, basically through doing things that an adult shouldn't do. But you know, sometimes I think I'm Peter Pan, apparently. Anyway, uh, so yeah, not much has happened in terms of uh, layout building, but I have been popping up when I get the chance and done a lot of tinkering. Um, I've been, working on locos, and I have been expanding the fleet, both in uh, motive power and rolling stock. So rather than having to do my intro another half a dozen times before I get this right, I might just stop here and I'll do another video explain, or oh, I'll just stop here. How's that sound? <laughs> okay, everyone, I'm behind the camera here. Um, so let's see if you can recall in the videos a long time ago when i got my uh canadian national draper taper unit i was always like oh gee i wish i got another one well look what happens to have appeared in the latest uh the latest run of those locos from um rapido and they're awesome i really love them but i had noticed that the new run of the rapidos they've gotten rid of the traction tires that the early ones had. Um, I think Scott Teague did a video about actually changing the axles on the original ones to get rid of, uh, or changing the wheels to get rid of the traction tires and just having metal wheels. So anyway, so there you go. I finally have those two units and um, yeah, I absolutely love them. So another thing, um, uh, a little while ago, a friend of mine came up to visit uh, and he, he bought a present with him, which I was, extremely um blown away by and it was one of these uh ns gondolas and he made me up a scratch made me up a whole load of different loads of metal so we have uh crushed cubes of metal metal sheet coils and uh metal rod as well and uh yeah he made up dennis made up all of these loads himself from cardstock and stuff like that and yeah, I was totally blown away by that gift, but he only got me the, the one gondola with four separate loads. So I, you know, I had to, didn't I? I went out and got myself a couple of more Trainworks gondolas. So yeah, I absolutely love those. And the fact that it was sort of given to me by a friend or not sort of, that was, and it's just, yeah, it's one of those ones that you really sort of just hold on to. It's fantastic. So I'll stop here. And then I'll turn around and I'll talk a bit more about what I've been up to. All righty, so here we go, everyone. A rundown on what else has been happening. So these first five units here, so this is for my coal train, and I really want to get my coal train running as well as I can. I'm still not quite happy with it. So these are the first five units here are all my EMD units, uh, SD70 ACEs and SD70 Ms. Uh, Fox Valley, Fox Valley, Kato, Kato, Kato. And I've uh, speed matched all those together as well as I can. Um, so CV2 for initial voltage, three and four for momentum, and then five for top speed and six for mid speed. Um, and I've just been setting them that way and it's, it, they're going quite well, all right? And then the other grouping I've done is my Jeevos. 
uh, scale trains, rivet counters, scale trains operator, and then Fox Valley models. Um, and I thought I had the two groups going well together, but as soon as I've set the, I've set my GE units just that little bit faster. So I still need to be doing a bit of tinkering with that. All right, I'm not finished yet with the speed matching. So what I've also been doing is I've been speed matching my UP units, okay? So um, SD70ACEs, uh, SD70M, GVOs, GVOs, and GVOs. Uh, the first five locos are all Cutos, and this one here is the Scale Trains Operator, okay? And I'd basically speed match those all the same way, so... I'm really happy with how that's all working. And on those long, long trains that I like to run, um, getting the speed matching has just improved the running out of sight. I just need to keep on working at it and soon we'll be happy, happy, happy. All right, let's move on. So another couple of acquisitions recently, there's a uh, online auction of a deceased estate that a friend put me onto of a modeler here in Melbourne and I managed to pick up these older but still awesome running um, Kato uh, SD40-2s. They're absolutely wicked, all right? And I picked up a lot of um, hopper cars to add to my grain rake. So all those sort of colorful ones and a few uh, weathered ones and stuff like that. Um, I won't go out and point them out all individually, but yeah, just added to my, um, added to the grain rake, which is kind of cool. So there's that. But one thing that I did pick up on this online auction, which is a bit of a impulse buy, I guess, and a bit of a splurge, well not a splurge, because it wasn't expensive and it doesn't really fit with anything I do. And it doesn't really like the um, Code 55 track is this thing. <laughs> so this is a rather old uh, Cutto GE uh, U50, I think it is. Um, and yeah, it's ugly as sin, but at the same time, it's just like awesome. And I did a bit of reading up about these locos and they weren't a success and they were withdrawn very, very quickly. But uh, yeah, so this one is DCC. Um, it actually runs really, really strong. It's just quite noisy. And uh, in certain parts of the track, the wheels just, um, they cut, they, they just catch on the um, on the tyres. And so, yeah, I might have to do a little bit of tinkering there, or I can just have it as just a, a cool looking loco, you know, so I'll hold, hold on. The uh, Bertie the Destroyer is back. How you going, mate? You all right? You don't want to look at us, Bert. There he is, Bertie the Destroyer. All right, another thing I've been up to. All right, everyone. So this loco you just saw up on the shelf, this is my Fox Valley uh, GE unit. And I got this on a, I don't know if it was a Facebook group or an eBay or whatever, but when I got it, really happy with it, runs great and everything. But this uh, handrail here up against the cab was, was missing. Um, and I've kind of ignored it for a while, but I, I finally got sick of it and I've made a new one. So I got some of that, um, uh, what's the company that does the stuff? The uh, Evergreen plastic. And I was trying to make a, a handrail out of that and it was just, you know, because it's white, but that was being very painful. What I ended up doing was actually just getting some of that garden wire tie, stripping off the plastic, cutting a section of it, bending it to shape and then just painting it. And I don't know, I reckon to me, it looks pretty bloody good. And the old three foot rule, no one would be any the wiser. All right, so there's that. I think that's about all of the technical updates I can give, so hold on. All right, I'm back. Um, I had to kick the cat out. Uh, it was all getting a bit too much. Um, so yeah. I think just before, or well, my last layout 
update was just as I was about to go to the N-Scale convention in um, Wangaratta. And that was a, a fantastic weekend. Um, massive congratulations to the organizers of it. Um, it was just, it was just great. It was a couple of days. You could all sort of nerd out on trains. Everyone, you know, like-minded people. You didn't have to worry about boring someone about talking about your hobby and you could really just, we could wallow in it for a couple of days. And that was fantastic. Um, there was good displays. There was some good trade stalls and the, um, what do you call it? The workshops um, were fantastic. I sat in on as, as many as I could. And, um, you know, being a bit of a, a, well, not a bit, being a lone operator here, you know, I can research stuff online and that, but actually sitting in these um, classes and learning from people and hearing things just explained a slightly different way. And just the wealth of knowledge that some of these people have was just, it was just awesome, you know? So it's easy, you can sort of, you know, I'm, an, I'm, I'm new to this model train thing, you know, in terms of building the layout and I've got my YouTube channel and you can, you know, I can sort of, you know, brag or whatever about that. But there's just guys out there who just have so much talent, so much ability, so much knowledge, just doing what they do, just because they love it. They're not on YouTube like me, being a Muppet, you know. It was just, it was not humbling, it was just awesome to see some of these things. Um, one thing that blew my mind was there was a couple of scratch built layouts there, like the entire layout was uh, scratch built. But there was one that really I found mesmerizing. Um, it's called Hexam Ish. So if you look up that on the Australian N scale page, I think, on or channel on YouTube, you'll see a video of this layout, and it's based on an old coal line up in New South Wales. And it just blew me away that every single thing on this layout was scratch built. The wagons, the locos, the lots, you know, tiny little end scale locos and all the bodywork was all hand formed and everything, you know, like before 3D printing came along and it was just, yeah, it was just amazing. So go have a look at that. But um, yeah, so I, I sat in, like I said, I sat in as many of the classes as I could and, and picked up a fair bit of stuff. And it was a little bit weird going there and a few people introduced themselves to me because they follow my channel and sort of getting strangers going, hey, David, nice to meet you. It's like, whoa, hello. Anyway, yeah, hi, Phil. And Eric, how you going? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, it was a great thing. So I'm really glad I went. I came home full of inspiration, but just haven't had a bloody chance to get in the layout room as much as I've been wanting to. So. Anyway, I'll stop and I'll try and do one more little thing and then, okay, so here we are. I'll put my glasses back on for this. These are my old glasses. If anyone's seen my good glasses, please let me know. I think they're at work somewhere. Anyway, um, working on and getting my trains all running well together, I've had to do a lot of cleaning and I'm not just talking, sitting them on a bit of, you know, cloth with a bit of alcohol and just cleaning the wheels. I've actually been pulling the locos apart and taking the trucks completely apart. And the stuff that I've been finding in some of the, um, on some of my locos, has just been mind blowing, you know? Sometimes just a little bit of scenery can get away and then just gets up into a cog and you think your loco is doing, you know, you're checking your contacts, you're checking everything and it's just, a mechanical bind in the cogs in the truck. So my um, Western Pacific Heritage Unit there, which has run like a dream for years, the last couple of months has been a bit weird and I pulled it apart and I pulled out massive chunks of scenery. So I don't know how on earth that's got in there. But one thing that's really helped me do that, a friend of mine put me onto these, same friend that puts me onto most things here, uh, magnifiers for my glasses. Now I was using one of those big dopey visory things, but I found it to be a bit of a pain in the butt. And uh, yeah, my friend Dennis put me onto these and this one just uh, clips onto the front of my glasses like that. And all of a sudden, oh, I cannot see you guys at all unless I get really close. There you go. <laughs> uh, and it gives me three times magnification. So when I want to um, work on the trucks and everything it's all clear as day but another thing that I picked up 
at the convention from one of the stall holders was also just this little touch lamp, um, which is really good. So it's all foldable. So I've just been getting the loco, you know, getting everything nice underneath this good light with my magnifiers and all of a sudden I can see things clearly. So that's been awesome. But um, I'll take these things off so I don't look like so much of a clown. Uh, but that's really about it, everyone. So um, yeah, I need to, you know, get my tail into gear and get some more scenery done. Um, I have an idea for that end of the layout, which may involve pulling the peninsula this way. But before I do any of that, I need to get up into that extension, get all my trees done, get all my scenery done to a point where it looks complete. We know these things are never complete. And um, then I can move on to this area rather than just taking the scattergun approach. So, right, there we go. That is a lot of rambling. So I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Um, seems to be a lot of stuff going on in the world at the moment and none of it seems to be good. So I hope you in your little world are happy and safe and um, doing all right. We're loving life up here in the hills. That's probably one of the reasons why I haven't been in the train room as much, just because we've been doing stuff, which has been great. Um, but anyway, until next time, look after yourself, and uh, I hopefully won't leave it quite so long to uh, see you again. Cheers. I don't really like doing that. I think I might take that out. <laughs>